When I worked at Novell in the early 2010s, we used this nifty tool called Support Config to gather up system logs for debugging. Its counterpart was called SCA, which ran patterns against these system logs to look for known issues. It then creates a nice looking HTML report. All credit for these ideas go to my once mentor from my Novell days, Jason Record. Here's what the reports looked like back in the day. Support config plus these reports created a straightforward way for us in SUSE technical support to know the basic health of a server. If we needed any logs or we had no idea where to start, asking customers for support config would make them feel heard and almost always give us some hint of what to try next. In many cases, the end report would link to a reworded version of the customer's issue. For example, someone might call in saying that their network is down, where in the report, you might see an error about DNS not resolving. Now that my day job is at Peerism, I want to see these tools in the hands of power users and hopefully, once matured a bit, in use to help debug PureOS or any other Debian-based device. When it came to porting support config to Debian, I had a really hard time locating the source. When I eventually did find support config source, it was written in about 4,000 lines of bash code and collects way too much customer data. With a bit of Python, I wrote a simple replacement for support config called the bug logs. While not as advanced as support config yet, this has one feature at its heart that support config largely ignores. Debug logs removes personal data from its logs by default. If it does capture unwanted data, it's a bug that should be filed and a filter created. This user protecting feature goes back to the core ideal of how Peerism handles user data. The other needed parts were also made available by JSON Record. This included many patterns, the core libraries used to analyze the configs, and one of my very first Python projects, SCA Tool. SCA Tool does what SCA Server does, but locally. It runs patterns against a support config and pops out an HTML report. Now that we can generate pretty much a support config on Debian-based distros, it's time to get the patterns core library up and running. This library lets patterns pull sections as text or compare version strings to find which is newer. The biggest issue with the Python library is it's written in Python 2 with some questionable variable handling. After a lot of search and replace and a bit of editing, I managed to get this partially working. I also added a new function to replace the old way of pulling section text. This is just much cleaner. I'm not sure how many of the Python patterns from the SUSE side can be pulled over, but if they're applicable, only small changes would be needed. While I've only worked on the Python part of this, the patterns core library is written in a few languages and would only need a few small changes to be useful on Debian-based distros. To get things going, I started with a few basic patterns. Scripts in the local directory get applied to all systems, while patterns in Byzantium only apply to Debian 10 based systems. This is what a pattern looks like. Pretty much all patterns are based on one another, so they all inherit the GPL2 license. At the top, we import core, which knows how to deal with an extracted support config directory. Next, we set up info about the pattern, like what OS this is for and any links that might be helpful. Next, this info is used to initialize the pattern. Next is almost always the function that does the heavy lifting. In this example, we're reading hardware.txt and getting the output of df-h slash. We store that in a variable like you should, then look through it line by line. While SCA is already open source, I already understand the inner workings of SCA tool, so that seemed like a good place to start. I gave it a quick Python 3 update and patched it to work with the new debug log archives. Debug tool can now run patterns on already run archives or generate new archives and create reports on that. I haven't tested all of the command line options, but I'm sure they could be made to work with just a few line changes. I've always enjoyed the process of debugging. An issue comes up that is certainly solvable. With a bit of this or that debugging, a component or problem is quickly found. With this fancy workflow, once an issue is identified, an article and pattern can be written. With that done, the next time the problem comes up, it will likely be identified and solved faster. Want to help out? I bet you'll love the GPL license and the handy links below.